What's up, guys? Well, got the uh, back plate in today, and we've got the new water block installed. So it looks pretty nice. But anyhow, let's get uh, with the rest of the install here. All right, well, we got the radiator and all the fittings put in on everything. So now it's time to start figuring out what way I want to, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, route all the tubes. So let's get on on that. Right, so we've got it. We got all the hoses routed about the way I want. We're gonna have it, this is where the pump's outlet comes in. So you got that going straight up into the inlet of the Corsair block. Then we've got it coming back down underneath the ram into here. And then it's just gonna go through the radiator, come back up here, and drop down into the reservoir. And that should work pretty dang good, and there's a lot less tube than I had last time, so I should be able to, you know, manage all those tubes perfectly with a couple zip ties, all, with all that zip tie stuff hopefully hidden behind that big giant 3090 founders. Anyway, let's get that thing filled up and start uh, leak testing, I guess. I'm excited. Alright, well, we've got everything all hooked up. And now it's time to fill up the loop. Got the fans all hooked up. I still haven't put them in the right RGB order because who cares about that right now. I just hooked them up. These are the new fans. I ran into a little snag where I can't hook the back fans up yet because I don't have long enough screws. Knocking over water and whatnot, that's helpful. These guys were not long enough. So I just need to get some screws that are a little bit longer, and then I can hook up the back fans. Not a big deal. Not going to lose any sleep over it. And then the second miniature, pretty much insignificant problem is the RGB for that won't be able to be hooked up until I get a, a two 5-volt splitter. I only have one 5-volt pin on the whole motherboard. I thought I had two, but it's the there's two 12 volts instead. But I'm not making that mistake again like I did with the last... Uh, uh, EK block. They didn't, or I didn't read the directions. It's not EK's fault. I didn't read the directions and I hooked it up to a 12 volt, fried the freaking RGBs. So, all right, let's start filling this up and leak testing, and hopefully everything is all good. All right, well, so far, so good. Let me grab a quick flashlight. There's not that much light around, but so far, so good. No leaks right away, anyway. We've got a big old air bubble to get rid of up there. Hopefully that'll get rid of itself here. We're just going to let this thing run for quite a few hours for leak testing. I haven't filled it up all the way, and I'm leaving the cap out for room for air to escape. And every once in a while, I'm going to take the case and shake it all over the place. That's the other reason I haven't filled this guy all the way up yet. But we'll come back in a couple hours and see how it's doing, see if any leaks developed or if we're all good. Hopefully we're all good. Usually when I do a water cooling system, uh, it just works. But see you guys in a couple hours. And while I wait for this, I figured this popped up. Wish me luck, guys. All right, well, I finally got all the components back. This thing has been leak testing for... More than 24 hours, no leaks, and we bled all the air out. Now it's just hooking up these RGB connectors, which I had to do some surgery on. We come over here. Since it's a 5 volt only, obviously you can't have four of those, so I had to pull a pin out of those. So I had to pull those. One of those out of those, so now it'll all work. But that was a little annoying, but it is what it is. That's what you get when you spend like seven bucks on Amazon. I probably should have just gone to like some PC thing, some PC site, and I would have probably been able to find it. Anyway, rambling. Let's get on with installing the rest of the RGB. 
All right, it's starting to get pretty dark outside, and I'm not done yet, so flashlight it is, so you can see what I'm doing. Sorry about that, but that's the best I can do, because I don't feel like waiting any longer to put this back together. They didn't deliver my parts until like 8 p.m. Anyway, though, I've got the drives back installed. I just basically axed the one terabyte hard drive. What's the point of that when you have a four terabyte hard drive and a two terabyte SSD and then a 512 gig M.2 drive, which I'm probably gonna upgrade to a two terabyte uh, PCI Express 4.0 drive, probably the Western Digital one. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Anyway, also tidied up with some zip ties, everything. Uh, got that guy lodged in there with some Velcro. That's about the only place I could fit him. Let's see, got the rest of this stuff all put together nicely, I'd say. We need to do a little tiny bit of dusting in there, but beyond that, I would say it's about ready to have the video card put back in and be turned back on. But all right, let's get on with that. Okay, so we got her all back together and posted in the windows and everything. I don't have the glass on quite yet because I just want to make sure it was going to turn on and everything before I went through all, like the trouble of setting it 100% back up. Unfortunately, though, they sent me the wrong, uh, what should we call it, extender cables for the 5 volts. They gave me... Uh, 12 volt cables and I need 5 volt cables even though I tried my little trick that I showed you in the beginning tearing one of the things out It still didn't power anything No matter what I tried so I need to order another part before I can again have an RGB Water block, but at least that water blocks not completely filled with gunk and goop So I should get better temps. So let's see if we do I've already got This guy loaded Hardware info. Alright, where we go? We gotta go down. Here we go. It's right now. So right now we're just chilling at 63 to 67 on the desktop. Uh, now let's just run a quick Cinebench R20. We're still climbing. Alright, so it looks like we're stopping at about 78. Oh, nope. As soon as I said this, there we're going higher. Up to 79. Alright, so we're still going, you know. Pretty hot, but I mean, it has got Performance Boost Overdrive 2 enabled and curve optimization and all that stuff, so can't expect too much. Still better than getting up to 85 to 88C, though, so we still got an improvement there. And if you've noticed, I did not decide, I decided not to put the other fans on. Luckily, I read that you can only do five things with that nine port RGB thing. That, uh, or thermal take, what do you call it? Thermal take, uh, premium sync, something like that. Uh, but it's got nine ports on it, and I figured you could hook, you know, six fans up to it or whatever. But nope, you're limited to five, four fans, and then something like a pump or a water block with the RGB. So I was like, well, what the heck's the point of that? Or I could go five fans, but I had six, so I would have not, that would have not worked. Plus, I did not have my, uh, each side comes with one of these, so even if I was just doing fans, I wouldn't have had any way to make the fans work, from what I understand, obviously, if somebody knows if that's true or not, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's what I got when I read the directions on the Thermal Take website. So, I decided to just deal with that, plus I realized how much air was actually coming out the back of this thing. These things work really freaking good. Anyway, 
Let's just run another quick CPU Z benchmark just for fun to see if I got my performance back if we're still sitting around 630, 640. I used to get 670 in single core, that's why I was sitting here wondering what in the heck is going on. No, I still get about 640 on the on the single core. So I still got more work to do there. Because at one point I had it at 670, but I don't think that one was stable, so I might just not be able to do that. But anyway, till the next video, peace out guys. Oh boy, we hit the jackpot this time.